Welcome to Office 365 Interview Questions and Answers. These questions and answers come from Office 365 tutorials found on this channel. How do you change user password? You can change user's password from Admin Center or Azure Active Directory. So first way to change user's password is through Microsoft's Admin Center. Once there, select Users, select Active Users. You can search for users in the search box over here, or if you see them over here, you can simply select them. So in this case, we're going to click on Sally Mo, and then once that opens, you have an ability to select reset password under their name. If you select that, it gives you a few options, and this is where you do it in Microsoft Admin Center. Alternatively, in Azure Actor Directory, once you have it open, select users on the left, you can also search for the users in Active Directory or you can simply select them. So we're going to select Sally Mo here again. And then from here, we can reset the password by selecting the reset password above the user's name. And here we can also reset the password on the right. Can you recover deleted files? Yes, admins can do it using a OneDrive link or through SharePoint. For admins to assist user in recovering their deleted files, you can do it to Microsoft Admin Center. That's the first place. So if you go to Microsoft Admin Center, select users, select active users, search for the user or select them. In this case, we're going to keep using Sally Mo as an example. On the far right side or far right tab, select OneDrive. From here, we'll be able to create a link to gain access to their file. So if we select create link to files, it's going to create a link that we can select or copy paste into a any browser. And then we're going to select that. We're going to open it up. And here, what it looks like is the same thing as users OneDrive. So you're doing it on behalf of user. And then if they have any deleted files, there will be a recycle bin over here. Alternatively, you can restore users' files through SharePoint. However, I will explain this a little bit later in the video because there is another question that relates to that. So please keep watching. Can users recover their own files? Yes, through OneDrive Recycle Bin. We're going to keep using the same user as an example. So Sally Mo accidentally deletes her files. She can certainly recover them through the OneDrive. So here's her OneDrive, and if she goes to Recycle Bin, she can recover any of these files that she accidentally or intentionally deleted. If she accidentally empties the Recycle Bin, the files are not permanently gone. She can still recover them by going to the second stage Recycle Bin, which is here. What happens to lost emails? You can check status of sent or received emails through Exchange Admin Center and performing a message trace. So sometimes users report emails missing, whether they've sent an email and the recipient hasn't received it or they have not received the email that customer was supposed to send it to them. So what happened to those? We can trace those by going to the Exchange Admin Center. On the left hand side, select Mail Flow and then select Message Trace. This will allow us to trace any messages that were being sent back or forth. To do that, select Start a Trace. We can select a sender, for example, Sally Mo. We're going to keep using her as an example. And then we're going to say recipients as in all to see if any, all. and then we're going to change the time range. We're going to leave it so we can see a, a instant access of the summary report. Select search. And here are the names that she sent. If we select one of them, we can see whether the email was received, processed, or delivered. If there is an error, it will show up similar to this where it says not delivered. This is an example of missing email. What is the difference between Office 365 Group and Distribution? Office 365 Group creates group emails, shared workspace, files, and calendars. On the other hand, distribution list is just an email list. So if you go to Exchange Admin Center, under Recipients, select Groups. 
This will show you Microsoft 365 groups by default. And to get an idea of what it does, if you were to create a new group, select Add Group, and then it will give you a description of what happens when you create Microsoft 365 group. And then it tells you here, it says group email, shared workspace, files, and calendars. These are all things that are created when you create Microsoft 365 group. Now, if you go to the distribution list, which is the next tab over, all this is is just an email list. All the people that belong to this email will get emails. So instead of sending emails to each individual person, you just send an email to this distribution list, which will distribute emails to everybody that is a member of this distribution list, aka email list. Where do you change user licenses? You can change licenses through Admin Center or Azure Active Directory. You can change users' licenses through Microsoft Admin Center. If you select Users, you can select Active Users. And again, you can search for User or simply select it. We're going to keep using Salimo as an example. We select Salimo, and the third tab over is Licenses and Apps. Select that, and from here, you can assign a different license if you'd like. Once you're done, select Save. You can do the same thing in Azure Active Directory. If you go to Users, find Sally, open it up, and then on the left side, you can select Licenses and then change licenses from here. Can you customize user licenses? Yes, you can customize licenses for each user. You can certainly customize any licenses. If you go to Microsoft Admin Center, select Users, Active Users, Select the user you want to make changes to. Third tab over, select Licenses and Apps. If you scroll down, you will see where it says Apps. Expand that, and from here, you can make changes, whether you want to add or remove certain aspect of that license. Click Save Changes once you're done. If you go to Active Directory, you can do the same thing. Here is the user. Select Licenses. You can already see which license is assigned select that and then from here you can do the same thing you can turn on and off certain parts of that license what is the difference between sharepoint and teams from admin point of view sharepoint controls group sites and files access while teams admin controls communication aspects of organization i.e from access to group chat to user device controls and settings so specifically from point of view of an administrator, so users will not be able to see this. You're administrator, and this is what you would see. Here's SharePoint Admin Center. And here we can see sites. We can see active sites. We can control different aspects of it when it comes to activity permissions and policies, and we can change any of these things related to sites. Remember, whenever you create a SharePoint, you create a site that users can use to collaborate and do things that are team-based. Of course, there are policies. You can change sharing and access control as well. In Microsoft Teams Admin Center, you can control different communication aspects. For example, if you go to Teams, Manage Teams, you can see which group chat that they're using or their channel, if you will, and you can create new ones, this and that. You can also change settings like devices, their control, their IP phones, and everything else that relates to communications. Can you have multiple different admins in Office 365? Yes, you can have multiple admins and can also have dedicated administration roles. It's a really good idea to have multiple administrators when it comes to Office 365, simply because there are a lot of things that are in there that need to be administered. You can make any user administrator if you really wanted to. This is also called roles. If you go to Microsoft Admin Center and find the user that you want to upgrade to administrator or change their role as it's known, once you have them selected and open, you can see under roles that you can manage roles. In this case, Salimo is an exchange administrator and billing administrator. We can add more roles to her or remove all of them 
together if you really wanted to or specific ones so in this case let's remove exchange administrator and just make her teams administrator and then we're going to click save changes and now she can be a teams administrator very simple how would you add a shared mailbox shared mailbox is created in exchange admin by creating individual mailboxes or by creating an office 365 group users can add the mailbox in outlook by add shared folder setting shared mailboxes are created inside of exchange admin center once you are there select recipients mailboxes and then add a shared mailbox so select that once you create a shared mailbox you can add members to it these are all people who are allowed to use and access this mailbox you can add users from here you can select the ones that you see from here or you can simply search for them and then add them so for example let's just add a couple of these users and once this is created there's also an alternate way to keep in mind that mailbox are already created and that is through groups so underneath the recipients instead of selecting mailbox select groups and then if you create a microsoft 365 group it automatically creates a mailbox for that group so keep that in mind now don't forget users need to go to outlook to add the shared mailbox and that is done by adding a shared folder this is how users can now access shared mailboxes what does error message you're missing out mean the error means that user does not have access or license to that specific part of office 365 here is an example of this error you're missing out ask your admin to enable microsoft teams in this case and it tells you right away that this person does not have access to teams so if we go back to the microsoft admin center for this person and then go to apps extend this make sure that microsoft teams is now selected this grants access to this user save changes and if we go back and hit select refresh here there we go now she has access to teams so anytime you see that message that means that they don't have access to that specific part of Office 365. What happens to reported email messages? To report an email message, you would do so through Exchange Admin, after which it's sent to security and compliance for a review. So every time you report a message, which is done through Exchange Admin Center, if you go in here and, for example, do a message trace, we're going to start a quick message trace here so that way we can report an email once we get an email that we can report we simply select report message this is then sent to research and compliance and it takes us there right away where we can report the issue for example if it's phishing malware or spam so this is where you would do it and this is what happens to it afterwards whoever is working security and compliance part of office 365 will go through and review these reports can you have multiple group owners yes you can have multiple group owners this can be changed in azure active directory or exchange admin center so this is an important question because yes you can have multiple owners this wasn't the case before from what i remember I even have it in one of my videos where I couldn't do it. It wouldn't let me have more than one owner, but apparently you can do it now. So I'm not sure what changed, but the answer is yes, you can have multiple owners. For example, here we are in exchange. If we go to groups, so these are Microsoft 365 groups, just for an example, and we select finance group, we can go in and go to members here and then view all and manage owners. We can see that Sally is the owner here, right? And then we can add pretty much anybody else we want so let's pick Bob here 
we're going to add and now we're going we have two owners see these are owners and they're all underneath here same thing kind of happens in teams which again wasn't the case before so the actual answer is yes uh, while again I tried it before in my other videos and it wasn't working so let's go to Tim's policy here or no matter of fact actually let's go to manage teams so we're going to change the team owner inside of Microsoft Teams Admin Center and you can already see that I already have Bob already is applied on there since we made the change in the admin center we can see that Bob is already an owner but then we can go in here and automatically add let's say Larry here to be an owner as well and you can see that it actually works so the answer is yes what is rank in group policy if you have a new group policy and wish for it to overwrite other previous policy you just need to rank the new policy with higher number this is done in Teams Admin Center. So this question actually refers to something that's within Microsoft Teams Admin Center. If you go to Teams and then select Teams Policies, you can see that there are three different policies in here. Now, the next tab over next to it is Group Policy Assignment. This tab over here is basically shows you which group is assigned which group policy to it and whichever takes the precedent the meaning that whoever has the higher rank will override any rules under the lower rank so let's see what happens when we click add group we're going to select which group we're going to apply a policy to so we're going to apply it to in this case let's see what happens actual finance group so this is a finance group we're gonna apply a policy to it and then we're gonna rank it meaning that if we select a um, if you select here you can see the description of it but if we change this number to higher than other ranks meaning other below policies then this rank will overwrite any policies that are lower or underneath it so we're gonna select that policy and we're gonna apply let's for example pick this one here and this policy here selected since it ranks higher it will override any other policies that this group has applied to it so we're gonna click apply so now we see that actual finance group is gonna rank higher when managing devices what settings can you control you can control anything from date time format to network settings this is another question related to Microsoft Teams. In this case, it's talking about devices inside of Teams. So devices in Teams are basically phones, display bars, and different electronics. For example, if you go to IP phones, select all the way to the right configuration profiles, and then select add, you can see different things that you can change when it comes to creating custom settings. And this is exactly what it looks like when it comes to a phone. You can change date, time format, display settings, if you will, and of course, network settings. Same goes for these other devices. Which computer platforms are supported by Office 365? Microsoft Windows OS, Android, Mac OS, and iOS. Both the Admin Center and Azure AD can access users. What is the difference? Admin Center allows for quick and basic user access control, while Azure Active Directory provides additional and more technical control of user profiles. I feel like the answer to this is self-explanatory, but I digress. Let's look how a user looks like inside of Admin Center. Once you have them selected, these are the options you have. You can change some account settings, you can change devices, licenses and apps, mail settings, and then OneDrive settings. Here is the same user in Active Directory. We can have changes to, we can do changes to roles, administrative units, groups, applications, licenses, devices, authentication methods, signing logs, audit logs, few more other things that don't exist in Admin Center. If Recycle Bin is not visible, is there another way to access it? Yes, you can access it through SharePoint. 
then select more features, then select user profile, then select manage user profiles, search for user, select manage personal site, and then select recycle bin. So this used to be done in OneDrive Admin Center. This is no longer the case. Now it's done through SharePoint Admin Center and for which you have to go down and select more features. And then you will see on the right, it says user profiles, select open. And once this open, we're going to select manage user profiles. Then we're going to search for user. use a drop down arrow here and then select manage personal site now we can select a recycle bin which is located right here this gives us direct access to user profile meaning onedrive so we are inside of users recycle bin we can select any of these files and then select restore which is directly restored into their OneDrive. Can you send emails from a shared mailbox? Yes, however, user needs to be allowed to send as an Exchange Administrator. So yes, users can send from shared mailboxes. And this is done by composing a new message or creating a new message, if you will. You have to make sure that From tab is enabled. Select on From and then choose the shared mailbox you want to send from. However, we have to make sure that in Microsoft Exchange Admin Center, user is allowed to send from. So let's take a look at that. And here we are in Exchange Admin Center. We're going to select recipients, mailboxes. Check the mailbox that we've just selected to make sure that the user can send from. And this is done by selecting the mailbox and then under mailbox permissions here, select mailbox delegation. And then we can say send as edit. And then we can see that Sally is indeed listed in there, including Mike and Bob. All of these people can send as and from that mailbox. If they're not in here, it's not going to work. Can users become admins? Yes, you can change any licenses or delegate team administration for their group. This is something we touched on earlier. Yes, users can become administrator. Let's pick a random one here in Microsoft Admin Center. We're going to select manage roles. In this example, Bob, I'm sorry, Larry does not have any administrator access. If we select manage roles here, we can give them administrator access. So we're going to select admin. So instead of user, no admin, we're going to select admin center access. And then we can make them whatever we want. In this case, we're just going to make them a help desk admin, save changes. And these are options of what kind of admins you can change them to. There are more, but this is an example of what you can see within Microsoft 365 admin center. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you best of luck in your interviewing. If you need assistance with specific job roles like help desk, system administration, network administration, guess what? Guys, I have videos for those too. I will put a link to the playlist on the top right hand corner if you want to check them out. And also, if you got a moment, please leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you got hired. How did your interview go? And if you got time, please click the like button. If you wish to support the channel, you can also join my channel, but none of that is necessary. I just want you guys to succeed in life. That makes me more happy than anything else. So again, I wish you best of luck and you have a wonderful day.